इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक फील्ड थ्री के ऑनलाइन सेशन को हम स्टार्ट करते हैं कुछ एक दो मिनट ताकि सब लोग ज्वाइन कर लें लास्ट जो हम इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक फील्ड थ्री में लेक्चर पढ़ रहे थे उसका सब लोगों को आइडिया होगा कि हमारे जो लेक्चर की तस्वीर थी मैंने वो आप लोगों से वैसे भी शेयर की हुई थी उसे हम आगे कंटिन्यू करेंगे लेक्चर्स को मैं शेयर करता हूं आप लोगों के साथ जी तो हम लास्ट क्या डिस्कस कर रहे थे कोई बताएगा सर डी इलेक्ट्रिक और कैपेसिटेंस हमने ये पढ़ा था सर डायपोल पढ़ रहे थे ना यस सर डायपोल भी यस सर यस सर आवाज क्लियर है मेरी स्क्रीन शेयर हो रही है आप लोगों से यस सर तो ओपनिंग जो लोग हमारे ऑनलाइन लेक्चर रिकॉर्डेड देख रहे हैं अटेंडेंस तो फिलहाल मैंडेटरी नहीं है लेकिन बहुत सारे बच्चों में से चंद बच्चे ही क्लास लेने आते हैं तो ये बहुत ज़रूरी है कि सब लोग क्लास लें और जो लोग ले रहे हैं क्लास उनकी मार्किंग अटेंडेंस की मैं कर रहा हूँ और जो लोग नहीं ले रहे हैं उनकी सेपरेट मार्किंग में अटेंडेंस की कर रहा हूँ भले वो कोई भी एक्सक्यूज दें कि ये मसला था वो मसला था तो लास्ट हम ये डायपोल के लेक्चर के साथ ही साथ हमने एक मेरिकल भी शुरू कर दिया था जिसे आज हम कंप्लीट करेंगे तो इस नुमेरिकल को मैंने बता दिया था या मुझे आज बताना था ये नुमेरिकल सर ये कर लिया था सर अगले नेक्स्ट पेज पे चले गए थे हम ये आपने असाइनमेंट दे दिया था सर असाइनमेंट का क्वेश्चन नंबर 13 था ये थर्ट यस सर 13 था 13 क्वेश्चन असाइनमेंट तो होपफुली आप सब लोग असाइनमेंट कर रहे होंगे मुबीन मेरे दोस्त 11 बजे मुझे याद दिला देना असाइनमेंट अपलोड करने का और क्विज अपलोड करने का यस सर रात भी याद दिलाया था सर रात को 1 बजे याद दिलाया था मेरे दोस्त यस सर भूल गया था मुझे तो सोने का टाइम है या मतलब काम करने का टाइम है रात 11 बजे करा दूंगा सर हां चले फिर भी थैंक यू आपने 11 बजे याद तो दिलाया यार कोई अच्छी बात है भाई मैं पैसे ही मुझे करता था तो मुझे आज याद दिलाते से कल भी नहीं हो सका आज मैं जरा बिजी था और हम इंशाल्लाह आज ये काम कर लेंगे मुझे मुबीन भाई याद दिला देंगे तो आज के सेशन को हम कंटिन्यू करते हैं जो कि कल मैंने करंट के हवाले से डिस्कशन कर ली थी और पावर के फॉर्मूले मैंने आप लोगों से डिस्कस कर लिए थे जो स्क्रीन पर शेयर हो रहे होंगे कि पावर के तीन फॉर्मूले होते हैं डेटा के हिसाब से हम उसे यूटिलाइज करते हैं ठीक है अच्छा मैं डिस्कस कर रहा था लास्ट बिल्कुल हाँ मुझे याद आया कंडक्टर एंड सेमी कंडक्टर्स को मैं डिस्कस कर रहा था आप लोगों से तो कंडक्टर और सेमी कंडक्टर का फर्क कोई बताएगा मुझे आप लोगों में व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन कंडक्टर एंड सेमी कंडक्टर एंड इंसुलेटर व्हाट आर द डिफरेंस बिटवीन सर कंडक्टर वो होता है जिसमें से करंट और हीट पास हो जाए कैरी जो कैरी कर ले हीट को और करंट को वो कंडक्टर हो जाता है आपका और बाकी सेमी कंडक्टर वो होते हैं जो सिर्फ हीट को या सिर्फ करंट को कैरी करें और इंसुलेटर वो होते हैं जो किसी को भी कैरी नहीं करते जैसे लाइक वुड है और दूसरे मटेरियल है तो उसमें से इलेक्ट्रिसिटी और हीट पास नहीं होती बिल्कुल ये बात आपकी इंसुलेटर की डेफिनेशन और कंडक्टर की तो सही है लेकिन आपने सेमी कंडक्टर की डेफिनेशन जो है वो सही नहीं बताई है वो आपने कंडक्टर सेमी कंडक्टर की सेम डेफिनेशन रिपीट कर दी है तो सर सेमी कंडक्टर में सर करंट इजीली उसको पास करवाने के लिए हमें टेंपरेचर हीट की जरूरत होती है 
उसका बैलेंस बैंड सर हमसे थोड़ा दूर होता है जो हमारा बैलेंस बैंड और कंडक्शन बैंड के अंदर एक नैरो बैंड होता है एनर्जी का और इंसुलेटर के अंदर ये वाइट बैंड होता है यानी चौड़ा होता है नैरो मीन्स पतला और वाइट मीन्स चौड़ा तो इतना पतला होता है सभी कंडक्टर में एनर्जी बैंड का गैप के हम अगर थोड़ी सी पोर्स जो कि हम इलेक्ट्रिसिटी या हीट के नतीजे में प्रोवाइड करेंगे तो इलेक्ट्रॉन बैलेंस बैंड से कंडक्शन बैंड में जम करके अपना इलेक्ट्रॉन होल पेयर कंप्लीट कर लेंगे और कंडक्टिविटी इस तरह सेमी कंडक्टर में कुलकुल होती है तो ये सब सेंसेस हमारे सेमी कंडक्टर्स होते हैं सेमी कंडक्टर्स वो होते हैं जो कि दो सब सेंसेस की डोपिंग के नतीजे में बनते हैं जो कि हमारे एक्सट्रेंसिक सेमी कंडक्टर्स कहलाते हैं इंट्रेंसिक सेमी कंडक्टर्स के अंदर सेम सब इस्तेमाल होते हैं और एक्सट्रेंसिव सेमी कंडक्टर्स के अंदर हम दो अलग अलग मटेरियल्स को डोप करके बनाते हैं जिसे सेमी कंडक्टर कहा जाता है और इसकी इंटरनल प्रॉपर्टी मैंने आपको बता दी है बैंड थ्योरी ऑफ सॉलिड के हवाले से लास्ट हमने जो डिस्कशन जिस पॉइंट में एंड की थी वो बैंड थ्योरी ऑफ सॉलिड के हवाले से असाइनमेंट के हमने अब तक थर्टीन क्वेश्चन मैंने सेंड कर दी आज इन असाइनमेंट के हवाले से डिटेल्स भी मैं एल पर रख दूंगा और क्वेज जो आप लोगों के से मैंने लिया था वो क्वेज जो आपके पास सेव होगा वो भी एल के ऊपर आपने अपलोड करना होगा तो जैसे ही मैं वो पोर्टल पे अपलोड करता हूँ आपको इन्फॉर्म करूँगा तो आप लोग अपने अपने क्विजेस जिसने क्विज वन ए और वन बी दिया है वो अपने रिस्पेक्टिव स्लॉट में उसे पुट कर देगा तो इस तरीके से एल पे ऑफिशियल तरीके से आपका क्विज अपलोड हो जाएगा ठीक है तो हम ये एक्टिविटी इन आज ज़रूर परफॉर्म कर लेंगे और कोई डिफ़िकल्टी उसमें होगी तो पूछ लीजिएगा चैप्टर सिक्स को आज हम शुरू करते हैं और इसमें हम डिस्कस करेंगे डाईलैक्ट्रिक एंड कैपेसिटेंस डायलैक्ट्रिक एंड कैपेसिटेंस ये आपके सामने लिखी हुई चीज़ें नजर आ रही होंगी तो डायलैक्ट्रिक हम कहते हैं उन सब्सटेंसेस को जो हमारे इंसोलेशन के तौर पे इस्तेमाल होते हैं इंसोलेशन के तौर पे इस्तेमाल होते हैं डायलैक्ट्रिक के जो सब्सटेंसेस होते हैं और डायलैक्ट्रिक का मतलब ये होता है कि डाई मीन्स दो और इलेक्ट्रिक यानी दो इलेक्ट्रोड्स के दरमियान जिस सब्सटेंस को हम दरमियान में इस्तेमाल करेंगे वो डायलैक्ट्रिक का सब्सटेंस होगा और उसमें हम इन चीज़ों को इस्तेमाल करते हैं और इसमें हमारा माइका होता है एक्वालाइट होता है मॉर्निशिंग का सब्सटेंस होता है और इसके अलावा दीगर भी हमारी चीज़ें होती हैं जिन्हें हम इस्तेमाल करते हैं तो इस तरीके से हम इनको इस्तेमाल करते हैं और दीगर चीज़ें इसमें देखते हैं सो तो बहरल अब हम आगे बढ़ते हैं तो डायलैक्ट्रिक के लिए जो स्पेसिफिक ट्रम इस्तेमाल होती है हमारी वो परमिटिविटी कहलाती है और परमिटिविटी जो हमारी होती है इज़ द प्रोडक्ट ऑफ परमेबिलिटी ऑफ फ्री स्पेस एंड परमिटिविटी द प्रोडक्ट ऑफ परमिटिविटी ऑफ फ्री स्पेस एंड रिलेटिव परमिटिविटी इज कॉल्ड परमिटिविटी एंड इट इज़ रिप्रेजेंटेड बाई एप्सल अगेन आई एम रिपीटिंग माई स्टेटमेंट द प्रोडक्ट ऑफ परमिटिविटी ऑफ फ्री स्पेस एंड रिलेटिव परमिटिविटी इज कॉल्ड परमिटिविटी Now comes the definition. The product of permittivity of free space and relative permittivity is called permittivity. It is represented by epsilon, and it is represented and depend on the material and the medium of observation on which we are taking in between the electrode of substance. So, relative medium is related to the material of substance that we are taking. so the details of permittivity of free space you can find from appendix c which is mentioned in the william height appendix c and last other book now come to the relation of d and e that is the product of permittivity of free space and uh, electrical intensity is called electric flux density that is represented by capital d and if we open the formula of epsilon not it will be open in sorry if we open the formula of epsilon it is not epsilon not it is epsilon it will be open in the form of epsilon not into epsilon r into e and combining these two things in epsilon it will be shown in this bracket formula 
now enter the stage is anyone have any kind of query he can feel free to ask at any stage on my email address on the live session that we are taking right now now come to the next topic that is capacitance of capacitor capacitance of capacitor is like a capacity of capacitor that is measured in uh, microfarad farad is a kind of name scientist which is nominated as a unit entity of capacitance and mostly and commercially we are using the unit the capacity of capacitor is microfarad now comes to the symbolic representation and internal diagram of capacitor that is uh, shown by the my cursor here you can see the positive plate of capacitor and the negative plate of capacitor separated by a distance of d this is a distance between d between the plates of capacitor capacitor of plate are connected with the terminal of battery the source of battery that have positive negative and dc charge the capacitor the dc capacitor are relatively called polar capacitor and the ac capacitors are relatively called non polar capacitor and we all know that non polar capacitor have no polarity that is the reason it will be connect in the ac current dc capacitor are connected by the polar source that is positive terminal of positive plate and negative terminal of battery of dc current with the negative plate that is we called a polar capacitor now comes to the formula most of the people are aware of q is equal to cv formula of capacity of capacitor that the product of the capacity of capacitor and voltage source is called is we called charge of capacitor and the capacity can be found from the charge of capacitor over voltage source is called the capacity of capacitor represented by c and major in microfarad capacity can also be found from the formula c is equal to epsilon a over d capacity of capacitor is directly proportional to the area of plate the area is represented by capital a and this area is the area of plate on which the charge is imposed on positive plate and also on the negative plate the d entity is recalled a separation of distance between positive plate and negative plate of capacitor that is represented by d and it is a separation of distance between the plates of capacitor epsilon we represent here you can see by the arrow epsilon equal to epsilon not and epsilon r the product of that it is no, we can say epsilon and it is also mentioned here most of the books are mentioned the area with the entity of s instead of a so right now any student have any query please feel free to discuss or write your query in comment section i can explain and repeat the things which i already explained in today's lecture so please feel free to ask any kind of question any kind of query in today's uh, online session okay if anyone have no any kind of question query so we can continue our today's lecture saying that is the series and parallel connection of capacitor that is that is cn that is equivalent capacitance we all know the capacitance of the capacity of capacitor would be increase in parallel if we connect capacitors in parallel their equivalent formula would be cn equal to c1 plus c2 plus c3 this is the main formula that we are using to find the equivalent capacitance from parallel capacity of capacitor and if we connect the series capacitor their equivalent uh, if we see the formula of equivalent capacitor in series connection of capacitor we can easily can found from 1 upon cn or we can say the 1 upon c equivalent equal to 1 upon c1 plus 1 upon c2 plus 1 upon c3 so we all know in series if we connect the capacitor in series the equivalent capacity of capacitor would be reduced so we have to connect the capacitor in parallel if we want to increase the capacity so this is the main scenario of series capacitor and parallel plate capacitor right now anyone any person have any kind of query you can feel free to ask any question any query
in today's online session now the next lecture now the next lecture i share with you on whatsapp uh for this uh, thing i need two to two minutes and here you go on our whatsapp group of emft course summer 2020 i already share a picture which you can see right now this is the next chapter number 8 we are moving towards chapter 6 uh, to directly on 8 7 chapter we also discuss here uh, i need to take a picture of this of chapter 7 chapter 7 is also in a very short chapter which i try to capture and share with you guys so please uh, wait for one minute i can share with you okay i already share so first we have to complete chapter number 7 and then come to the chapter number 8 okay so today's lecture is now continue with chapter 7 uh, here you can see uh, the name of today's chapter 7 name is laplace and poisson's poisson's equation some of the people uh, called its poisson equation and some of the people can say it's a poisson equation poisson and poisson these are the two names of this equation so comes to that to calculate electric potential that is v is to relate that potential to the changed to the charge density which gives rise to it the electric field intensity is related to the change the charge density that is rho and some of the book it called rho q by the divergence delta relationship that we call divergence of e equal to epsilon not over sorry rho over epsilon not we can also in other words we can say the divergence of electric field intensity is equal to the charge density over permittivity of free space is we called the laplace relation this is this equation is the laplace equation that is equation number 1 it is represented by laplace laplace said if we divide the charge density with permittivity of free space that result is equal to the result of we taking the divergence of electric field intensity the answer that is equal to the left side and right side both the answers are equal because in left side it is also a scalar entity and the right side is we also called a vector entity scalar entity and both equations are equal in answer this relation is represented by laplacian equation and we also called a laplacian equation of electrostatic phenomena as we know that electric field intensity equal to the minus sign of gradient of v this relation we already incorporate in yesterday's lecture that is we now already observe in equation number 2 this relation of electrostatic that we called the divergence of gradient of v multiplied by the minus sign equal to the electric field intensity this relation of equation number 2 now we are using in laplace equation uh, the above equation this relation is we are using this okay now by the poisson equation it will be we use electric field intensity formula of minus gradient of v here and equal to the rho over epsilon not that is charge density over permittivity of free space we can also said this that gradient of minus sign can be represented in the form of delta 
the radiant of v minus can be represented in delta and outside the bracket we can already seen that the delta is in dot with the other other product so delta dot gradient that delta is represented with gradient or with b both the delta can multiply with each other that is delta square equal to v and if we want to find the value of this thing we have to take it equal to zero now the scenario the negative sign is shifted towards this sign this side and both the delta will be delta square and the negative sign of this entity would become zero that equation will become equation number 3 and this is equation number 4 the above equation 4 now become laplace equation here this is the relation of uh, maxwell equation coming towards this is poisson equation and if we put maxwell equation in poisson equation it will be transformed into laplacian equation this relation of name by the title of chapter is laplace and poisson's equation this is the title of chapter number 7 so move on to the statement the above equation 4 now become laplace equation and the divergence of gradient if we take the divergence of gradient of the function is called the laplacian equation i think now you can easily understand the scenario this scenario and topic is relatively we called the relation of maxwell poisson and laplace equation interconnected with each other and provide the result in the form of laplacian equation this is the whole scenario that we are discussing in equation of oh, sorry in chapter number 7 there are many topics also available in chapter number 7 but i already i only incorporate the maxwell poisson and laplace equations there are many things are available but according to the course outline i all i only incorporate maxwell poisson and laplace equation from chapter number 7 now this is all from the chapter number 7 comes to the chapter number 8 that is here chapter 7 chapter 8 chapter 8 have the title the steady magnetic field anyone any one of you can explain what is the meaning of the steady magnetic field what do you think what is the steady magnetic field i am requesting with you any one of you can explain what is the steady magnetic field <clears throat> uh, if you not comfortable with the steady magnetic field you can explain what is the meaning of steady steady what is the meaning of steady can anyone explain what is the meaning of steady we are not talking about the whole title we are only talking about the steady what is the meaning of steady sir steady jo hai na usko na pakke ko kehte hain jaise like uh, jo break na ho sake is type ko unbreakable jo hoti hai unbreakable okay steady steady means linear not change the opposite of the word steady is dynamic dynamic means moving change its position continuously moving this is the meaning of dynamic and the opposition of dynamic is opposite of dynamic is steady and steady means not move not change static in nature so we are talking about the steady magnetic field thank you mr usman now continue with the, the topic that is a steady magnetic field uh the picture is not much clear but i try to zoom again and again uh it is a maximum limit of a zoom so i thought i explain in my own words if we uh if we if the current flow dc in nature in steady mag in steady the dc current is in steady in nature 
because we all know there are two kinds of current that is ac and dc the current that is we called ac is represented by the alternating current alternating current can change its direction from positive cycle to negative cycle continuously and in the time of one second it will change its positive cycle to negative cycle in 50 number of times that means in one second 50 times it change its direction from positive to negative that is the reason <clears throat> we call the frequency of supply that is come towards our home that is in 50 hertz 50 hertz we call it what is the meaning of 50 hertz the supply of current of ac come to our home and the cycle of positive to negative change in 50 times in one second that we call 50 hertz of signal now there are two types of signal that is ac and dc the whole scenario which i already incorporated what is ac now come to the dc current the dc current is direct current direct means it cannot change its direction from positive to negative and negative to positive this a scheme and scenario can exist only in AC current, not in DC current. So what, what is a DC current? DC current is a direct current. It cannot change the direction from positive to negative. It, it is only in positive direction and only in negative direction. It cannot change its direction from positive negative to negative to positive. So the AC current is dynamic in nature and the DC current is steady in nature. And the magnetic field which are created by the DC current is we call steady magnetic field and the magnetic field that is coming from ac current is dynamic magnetic field and we also call it a time varying field that is represented or generated by ac current so i am uh, taking a one minute break and continue the session uh, in one minute Okay, anyone of you have any kind of query or question, you can feel free to ask at this time. I can explain your query or question or otherwise I can continue the lecture. Now come to the, again, the topic. Uh, so I already explained what is AC current and DC current. Uh, so again, continue. If the AC current flows in steady and time invariant yani in, independent of time then and produce a steady magnetic field that is the uh, i can uh, explain in my own word that if a dc current can flow in a wire conductor or region it can create a magnetic field that magnetic field that is represented or created by a dc current is called a steady magnetic field m and the magnetic field which is created by a uh, ac current that magnetic field is we call dynamic magnetic field but mostly we are uh, named a dynamic magnetic field as time varying magnetic field not we call dynamic magnetic field but we can say it as a time varying magnetic field so i again repeat the magnetic field which is created by uh, an ac current is called time varying magnetic field and the magnetic field which is created by a DC current is we call static magnetic field, steady magnetic field, sorry, steady magnetic field. Uh, till now we explain all the kind of thing. Now start the topic that is Bayard Savart law. Bayard Savart is a scientist represent a magnetic field law that we call a magnetic field law that is by our law up till now the steady electrostatic field produced by static charge that means if a positive charge or negative charge is placed in a free space region and in it is placed in a static position a static position means it is not moving in any kind of direction it is only static in nature not moving in nature so the lines of forces that is flow from charge that is in 
positive uh, charged lines of forces or negative lines of forces that we call the lines of electrostatic fields that is produced by steady place charge produced by static charge so static charge produce steady electrostatic fields that is in rest that is in rest if a charge is in rest it produce steady electrostatic fields magnetic field exist due to permanent magnet so the magnetic field can produce by permanent magnet what is permanent magnet can anyone explain what is permanent magnet and what is electromagnet can any of you can explain what is the meaning of permanent magnet and electromagnet सर इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक सर होता है कि सर मैग्नेटिक फील्ड में ना सर वो प्रोड्यूस करता है सर इलेक्ट्रिक करंट ओके एंड व्हाट इज परमानेंट मैग्नेट जी सर काइंडली रिपीट योर क्वेश्चन व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ परमानेंट मैग्नेट सर जी परमानेंट मैग्नेट वो होता है जो जिसकी मैग्नेटिसिटी वो खत्म ना हो यानी कि इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक मैग्नेट तो ऐसा मैग्नेट होता है ना उसको चार्ज देके हम कुछ टाइम के लिए मैग्नेट बना देते हैं फिर जब थोड़ा अरसा गुजरता है तो फिर वो दोबारा से लोहा बन जाता है तो और कुछ मैग्नेट होते हैं जो ऐसा नहीं होता वो परमानेंट रहते हैं तो उनको परमानेंट मैग्नेट कहते हैं यस मिस्टर उस्मान प्रोवाइड हिज आंसर इन सम काइंड ऑफ कनेक्ट वे सो आई कैन एक्सप्लेन माय सम काइंड ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन रिगार्डिंग इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेट एंड परमानेंट मैग्नेट परमानेंट मैग्नेट उस्मान इज राइट it's a permanent magnet is a fixed magnet it can be uh, found from the substances which are we called nickel iron and cobalt these are the three substances which can already have the magnetic properties so we take iron nickel and cobalt and providing heat to these things and melt these three things and combine to form a mixture of the ore of nickel iron cobalt after it form a solid form it can form a permanent magnet this is the alloy made magnet and natural magnets are we can extract from our forest forest kehte hain pahadon ko we can take per uh, natural magnet from uh, forest and these are the also we can say natural magnets permanent magnets are artificial magnets they uh, these magnets are man made and i already said that nickel iron and cobalt have the magnetic properties little bit of them so we can uh, get these three uh, nickel iron cobalt elements provide heat to them melt them and mix with each other after mixing each other we can get a combined form of nickel iron cobalt in a solid form it's uh, then form into a permanent magnet it's an artificial magnet not a natural magnet natural magnet we can extract from forest pahadon se hasil karte hain so permanent magnet now comes to the electromagnet electromagnet is a kind of magnet we can take a iron kind of needle keel ko lete hain hum iron needle and bound a wire on it continuously after two ends we can get providing two ends by a positive and negative charge of battery or dc current it can transform that needle into a magnet when we increase the current the electromagnet that is made by the electricity can be increase the magnetism if we decrease the current of electromagnet the magnetism of kind of magnet can be reduced this is the scenario of natural magnet permanent magnet and electromagnet i think i answered the kind of scenario uh, that is created at this time now continue the lecture that is natural uh, phenomena and we required to discuss a link between electric and magnetic field there is a link between electric field and magnetic field and what is it we all know a current carrying conductor produce a magnetic field around it so conductor carrying a current it's a electric phenomena the magnetic field produced around that conductor is a magnetic phenomena so there is a link between electric field and magnetic field 
and this link scenario already discussed in second year and metric uh, chapters uh, you can uh, going through these kind of things what is the relation between electric and magnetic field so electric magnetic field the basic scenario is that the current carrying conductor will produce a magnetic field around it so if we provide a current from a conductor this is the electric phenomena the magnetic field create around the conductor it's a magnetic phenomena so this is the link between electric and magnetic fields now start with the kind of basic things in in 1920 oerested so uh, now at this stage we are not discussing the biot savart law we are starting with basic scenarios biot savart law start uh, hopefully in next lecture but this is the basic things we are not coming towards the biot savart law biot savart law is the peak scenario of magnetism and we are not aware of basic things of magnetism so i start with the basic scenarios with these things so uh, we are discuss the basic things not biot savart law biot savart law will be start but in next session so in 1920 oerested the complete name of oerested is hens crested oerested oerested in 1820 discuss this relation what of relation the relation between electric and magnetic field he stated that when the charge when the changes are in motion when the charge is in motion when charge is in moving position in moving condition they are surrounded by a magnetic field so i again repeat if a charge is in moving it surrounded by a magnetic field thus the current carrying conductor is always surrounded by a magnetic field whenever we passing through a current from a conductor either it is a ac or dc it produce a magnetic field again i uh, classify the kind of thing with the repetition of ac current and dc current and that is uh, main scenario is that uh, that is a current carrying conductor produce a magnetic field but here is a question what kind of current it is an ac or dc any kind of current produce a magnetic field but there is a difference between the current so there is a difference between the magnetic field and how can i elaborate this thing if we provide a dc current to a conductor it produce a magnetic field but this kind of magnetic field is a steady magnetic field if you provide an ac current to a conductor the magnetic field is produced around the conductor but this magnetic field is time varying magnetic field dynamic magnetic field so this is the main difference between the magnetic field and current but the main scenario is that if we provide a current to a conductor it produce a magnetic field around that conductor this is the main scenario and link between the electric and magnetic scenarios now comes to the magnetic field and its properties and what is it the magnetic lines of forces and flux flow from north to south we all know the magnetic lines of forces can flow from north to south introduced by michael faraday michael faraday is a scientist who can explain the scenario that magnetic field or magnetic lines of flux are starting from north and ends at south so the lines of force is starting from north north and collect at s north to south north to south this scenario we already known that magnetic lines of forces are flow from north to south in this way also so this basic thing are incorporated by michael faraday and michael faraday is also a person who explain the basics of transformer that the change of flux in primary uh, coil of conductor produce the induced emf in secondary coil this scenario is also represented by michael faraday now we have the less than of minute so basic Uh, one thing i al also explain here that right hand rule right hand rule is be called what is it the th the direction of thumb is a direction of current and the direction of finger is a direction of magnetic field current flow by the wire or conductor the right hand rule is also incorporated by 
hence crested or rested hence crested or rested incorporate or explain the right hand rule and what is the direction of current is thumb direction and the direction of flow is a uh, finger's direction magnetic field direction is finger direction and thumb direction is current direction that is uh, we call right hand rule so this